Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Monday. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Nettie Iranpour. You know, just going to North Park sounds really good right now. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> a lot a of good spot. options. Yeah. Yeah, a lot to do, a lot to see. Let's mm -hmm. check in with Evan here and see how the weather is shaping up. A much different story than last oh week. Oh, my just, gosh. Let's just, let's just put that week behind us. I'm glad I covered last week so that now that we had in, I mean, it's a roller coaster that's only going up at this right. point. Because, <laughs> I mean, last week was a bummer at times yeah. with what we were looking at. Uh, some trouble across the roads. Now we're starting off this week with actually very nice conditions out there. Notice what we've got on satellite radar is very, very light in that color green that you've got on the screen there, indicating in some of the cases here we're looking at Virga, meaning it's fallen from the sky, evaporating before it even makes its way to the ground. Otherwise, though, cloud cover pretty significant as we start off your Monday morning. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s by this afternoon. The moon letting in plenty of light to start off the day since we still have about 40 minutes before that sunrise. Uh, mostly cloudy skies, some sprinkles possible. Another chance for showers Wednesday before temperatures warm up for the weekend. Jenny, over to you. Well, we've got a couple new things traffic wise, especially concentrated up in the North County. Good morning to you. Welcome to Monday. The bulk of the county travel time wise looks OK, but if I take you on over to the north, you can see we've got some crash icons here impacting the 15. So southbound side near old highway 395, two lanes are blocked with a crash. No updates on injuries there in this particular stretch of the 15. Your travel times are OK. However, if I take you a little bit further north, continuing that southbound trek, or I should say it's before, but once you hit that 76, it looks like a single lane is blocked, that left-hand shoulder is blocked as well. Now, I know CHP is reporting nobody was hurt in this crash, so it does seem fairly minor, but because we've got crews on the scene, as you're driving through Palo Mesa south on that 15, you are down to about 42 miles an hour, so a little bit of a delay this morning. Speaking of delays, everything to the South County looks fine, and no major crashes reported here. Netta. Jenny, thank you. And we do have a push this morning from local law enforcement to get their officers among this first group in line for the vaccine. And the order of who gets vaccines, who qualifies, where to get a shot can all be confusing. Yeah, and that's part of the reason there is an event today to address all of the concerns people are having out there. News 8's Chris Grow live along Harbor Island now to break all of it down for us this morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta. And yes, because as soon as we get everybody vaccinated in tier 1A and 65 and older, the quicker we can move on to the next tier and the quicker that we can begin to rebuild our economy or get kids and teachers back in classrooms and all of this having to do with one another. And that's why partly this town hall is being held here and you can see uh, it'll be virtual. It'll be held from five to six later on today. But again, the idea to help people better understand the vaccine and the effort behind getting more people vaccinated. Now you can see Mayor Todd Gloria joined with several doctors from our community and those in health and human services. Uh, the idea is to try to get those that are in tier 1A or 65 and older that are hesitant to get the vaccine all the information that they need. It should also help those trying to get a grip on making an appointment or knowing when it could be their turn. Now, speaking of turns, this town hall is happening as that group that you mentioned that represents police officers and sheriff's deputies. They are calling for law enforcement officers to get vaccinated now. In fact, Chula Vista Police Chief Roxana Kennedy, who also serves as president of the San Diego County Chiefs and Sheriff's Association, spoke with us about the effort to get those law enforcement officers vaccinated sooner. She's pointed out that they will oftentimes be the first on a lot of scenes, especially those requiring medical attention. And instead of waiting for uh, health uh, health officials, or excuse me, I should say, uh, those who work in uh, either as a paramedic or EMT to get, go ahead and render first aid, some of those times those law enforcement officers will be the first ones to give aid and they should be protected as soon as possible. I just hope that through all this discussion right now that our county supervisors and uh, our public health officer will work with us and look at a way to help the officers and deputies in San Diego County. And you may remember, we actually had a number of firefighters get vaccinated during the Tier 1A push, and that's because they qualified if they had their EMT or paramedic certification, they qualified as healthcare workers, which made up a big chunk of Tier 1A. Now, if you need any more information about today's virtual town hall or any type of vaccine information, just go to our website, cbs8.com. Eric Anetta. All right, Chris, thank you for that. Meanwhile, our county's third vaccination superstation is now open at Cal State San Marcos. 
It is indoors at the Sports Center on campus. This is a collaborative effort between the county and university, as well as Palomar Health, UC San Diego Health, and Tri-City Medical Center. Superstation is open five days a week, Sundays through Thursdays from 9.30 to 3.30. You can call 211 or sign up online to register. We have the link on our website, cbs8.com. Today marks the start of a new effort to make sure local businesses are following the rules. Now that outdoor dining is back, San Diegans enjoyed some of their favorite spots for the first weekend in months. I know, Netta, you were out and about, yeah. and uh, you saw some places that were very busy. It, it did definitely get busy. We like to go right when restaurants open just to get that early crowd right. so that we beat the crowd. Right. Oh, no, there was Didn't no beating the crowd. <laughs> there was a lot of people because, uh, yeah. you know, we miss going to sure. our favorite spots. Uh, News 8's Teresa Sardina joining us live in Kensington. And of course, you want to make sure they're following the right rules. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Netta and Eric. Yes, outdoor dining is back. And across the county, you're seeing canopies and tables on sidewalks, bike lanes, streets. And the city just wants to make sure that business owners are complying with the safety guidelines. And a lot of business owners we spoke to say they were expecting some new requirements. And the city is reminding business owners about the safety requirements for those providing outdoor dining and retail operations starting today. San Diego Fire personnel will be visiting businesses providing information about the requirements in order to expand business and dining into private parking lots. Businesses are required to obtain a temporary outdoor business operations permit, and this includes constructions of decks, platforms, and temporary structures. The permit is to confirm that business owners are following the safety protocols and COVID-19 public health orders. Jessica Smith of Cucina Sorella says they're back to business serving outdoors, doing their best to make sure their customers are feeling safe. It came very suddenly and with every all every change that's happened this past year, we were prepared to take on whatever challenge they threw our way. Um, the amount of time that the state gave us to close and reopen was limited. The city says operations within private properties, including privately owned parking lots, will not need this permit. And the city is calling it a TOB, a temporary outdoor business operations permit. That's a long one, but we'll have more on these guidelines at CVS8.com. I'll send it back to you. Teresa, thank you. It is back to school today for hundreds of elementary and special education students in the Poway Unified School District. My kids were all excited about this, had their backpacks all set. In-person learning already resumed for preschool students last week as the district starts to phase back its students and staff. However, the district's middle and high school students are not getting the green light quite yet. The state requires counties now to be in the red tier before those schools can open, and San Diego County is still in the purple tier. It's always so fun to lay out your first day of school outfit, so they've had to do that a few times. Right. Uh, we are seeing a downward trend, by the way, among local COVID-19 cases. County health officials are now reporting 1,274 new cases. That's about 7% of the nearly 19,000 tests. Hospitalizations are also trending in that downward direction. 41 people were admitted with COVID yesterday. ICU admissions now at 380 current patients, 15% available ICU bed space. Six new deaths does bring our total now to 2,619 people who have died. Uh, today, President Joe Biden will meet with GOP senators working on a counter proposal of his relief bill. Ten Republican senators sent a letter to the president yesterday proposing a lower cost alternative to his $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief plan. Those GOP senators say their plan cuts the price tag by about two thirds, about $600 billion in relief money. Among the key differences in the GOP plan, stimulus checks would provide $1,000 instead of $1,400 and recipients would be capped at lower income brackets. We know a lot of you uh, hit the mountains this weekend <laughs> and uh, we joined quite a few people that were up at Palomar Mountain and they had some nice uh, spots to go tubing. I uh, brought the sleds out there and uh, this is my oldest son Caden. He was doing okay on this run Ooh, until he hit that tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going pretty out. fast And there. here's uh, here's dad and daughter and uh, we had some fun. We oh. actually made it all the way down as well and um, it's just a lot, lot of fun, you know, you, especially when you bring this disc out. Some of the uh, yeah. runs were really slick out there. <laughs> and I think my uh, middle child, Cole, found that out the hard way right Look here when Cole. he tumbled over here and got a little whitewash. <laughs> uh, for my daughter, this was her first time seeing snow. That's I mean, this awesome. was her first time seeing snow. And we're so lucky and blessed here that we can just drive to it, mm -hmm. enjoy it, 
and then leave it behind. <laughs> was it an hour, hour and a half? How it was just it? about an hour okay. and change. I mean, um, it wasn't too busy so cool. up there when we went on Saturday afternoon. That's so a it was big just a lot hill of, fun. of snow. It's yeah, covered. Yeah, it was great. We're getting some great. air on there. Yeah, I got some air. It was fun. That and face uh, plant didn't bother Cole either. <laughs> it, so. I tell you, he's doing okay. But uh, Dad landed on his tailbone a couple times. Oh, still feeling I saw you. You were trying to gain that. momentum on there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Hey, so the snow across the mountaintop is going to stick around for a little bit longer. We see some of those pictures picturesque photo sent in of uh, just what those mountains look like with those uh, snow covered caps. As we start off now our Monday morning, it is pretty pretty pleasant across uh, at least coastal communities and down toward our lower elevations. We are hanging out with a low pressure system that's overhead. It's going to kind of pinch off into two. So while most of that wet weather is affecting the Washington and Oregon coast, for example, with rain and snow, even up through uh, Northern California, take a look at this low pressure system that comes off our way. It's really, really mellow and benign going to bring us maybe a few light showers between now and Wednesday. Otherwise, the majority of what we're going to be seeing in terms of the effect of this low pressure system is going to be just cloud cover. So we've got a good amount of cloud cover today, mostly cloudy, if not partly sunny at times. We're going to start to see this high pressure system, though, that's building off of the Pacific start to come towards us. That's going to keep us dry. It's going to cause that air really to rise and, uh, and then sink. So what we're seeing right now is that rising effect possibility of those clouds building and then once that air starts to sink it will inhibit that cloud production and will start to move toward a more spring like weather pattern with sunshine in the mix as we head toward your Thursday Friday Saturday really beyond that so for today you see those rising uh, clouds for the most part building moisture uh, possibility of some rain showers over the mountaintops for the most part but it's actually going to be really pleasant in general your temperatures are about normal if not a few degrees above normal we've got 67 for that high across San Diego same with Ramona 70 making it into the 70s across uh, some of the desert locations and then looking at your high temperatures for this afternoon 70 or 62 in Del Mar 68 in Poway Miramar going to make it to 66 and Al Cajon almost in that 70 degree territory Jenny has a check of what traffic looks like happy Monday Jenny well hello yeah happy Monday too as well you know if you're going to be traveling anywhere in the North County well specifically near the 15 Unfortunately, there are a lot of crashes that just kind of popped into the system here. So let me take you on up north here. Let's start in Fallbrook and make our way down, shall we? There's a crash on Mission Road right at Industrial Way. It just happened a few moments ago. So right now, single lane is blocked with crews. No updates on injuries. Here on the 15, we've got a stretch of several crashes here. So heading southbound right before you hit the 76, right on the median there, there is a crash involving several cars. Usually when they say multi-vehicle, it's about three or four cars that are involved there. I don't have any updates on injuries and your travel times actually look okay. This one just happened not too long ago. Continuing south on the 15, you're the 76 as well. So similar location, one lane blocked, the shoulder is blocked as well with the crash. Over on the 78, San Pasquale Valley Road, right near Weekend Villa Road, there's some sort of an, an obstruction there, so a single lane is blocked. You can see the eastbound 78 seeing some backups this morning. Finally, on the 163 northbound, right after that exit to the 8, that second lane is blocked. Apparently, there's a safety cone, which is not so safe there, so it's blocking a lane.